Hi friends, it's Deanna Wilson from Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm back with mm, almost the last book in our bag of books. This is called A Manual for Religion, My Catholic Faith, A Catechism in Pictures. And if you're like me, you're right now thinking, what? I've never heard of this. This is published by Sardo House Hardback. It's that lovely burgundy color, right? Nice sacred color there. It is big. Oh, we just did two other books. Let's see if we can hold them up and see. Bigger than Padre Pio. Roughly about the same in width. Let's see here. What about that Orthodox Study Bible? Out of, oh my goodness. How is that Orthodox Study Bible so heavy? It is bigger than the Orthodox Study Bible, but the Orthodox Study Bible is thicker. Okay, we're setting those aside. The Orthodox Study Bible, it's like dense. <laughs> it's so heavy. Um, this was made by the most reverend Louis La Ravois Moreau, DD, Bishop of Krishnagar. Now, there's a quote at the bottom. Now this is everlasting life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and him whom thou hast sent, Jesus Christ. And that is from John 17, 3. There are some acknowledgments here. Ah, the acknowledgments are for the Right Reverend Edward G. Murray, D.D., Rector of St. John's Seminary in Brighton, Massachusetts, and the Reverend Father Charles O'Connor Sloan, STL, SSL of St. Joseph's Seminary in Yonkers, New York, for kindly and painstakingly reviewing this work. All material from a Catechism of Christian Doctrine Number no. 3, Revised Edition of the Baltimore Catechism, and from the 1941 translation of the New Testament, is reproduced in this book with permission of the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine in Washington, D.C., on the cover, the symbol there represents the Catholic Church, which under the protection of Christ brings the reward of heaven, the wreath to the faithful. This is the third edition, copyrighted in 1949, 1952, 1954 by Louis Lavoir Moreau um, and republished from the 1954 edition by Sardo House in January 2000. This was from the seventh printing in 2011. So this must be wildly popular. I've never heard of it before. I don't know about you. And Sardo House is actually in Kansas City, Missouri. You can see the typeset is old timey once you get into the book. As a thank offering for the innumerable graces received, this work is humbly dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ in the sacrament of his love, the most blessed Eucharist for the benefit of the young. There's a little preface over here. It's prepared for those who desire to have a concise knowledge of the doctrines and practices of the Catholic Church. It is a complete catechism, useful for ready reference, for it takes up in a clear and practical manner the questions and subjects that are likely to arouse the interest of the general reader, whether Catholic or non-Catholic. Um, I'm not going to go on and really read this all to you, except I'm going to tell you that this is actually the last book in a series, my religion series. The first ones were My Jesus and I for Little Ones of Kindergarten Age, My First Communion, and then My Catechism Book and I, My Catechism Book 2 for Intermediate Grades to be accompanied by My Bible History, and lastly this book, My Catholic Faith. It will have a strict logical sequence and subject matter, the Credo, containing what we must know and believe, two, the commandments of God and the Church, containing what we must do, and three, the sacraments and prayer containing the means of grace by which we can attain God. It is not, however, necessary to follow the sequence when reading, teaching, or studying this book. It goes on with some more notes about the best ways to study it for different ages and whatnot. Uh, content are, okay, page one is obviously the biggest section. Pretty easy to figure out what you're doing. It's got a lesson number here on the left the name of the lesson, and then the page number, it has that nice dot, dot, dot leading you over there. There's not a huge gap between that and the lesson number, but the lesson number has a period after it, whereas the page number does not, so you can kind of follow it there. Um, it continues a little bit on page two, and then there's part two, what to do, and part three, means of grace. Oh, remember before it was saying that uh, the credo, the commandments, the sacraments, so, but, and it kind of had in italics, what to believe. So this is what to believe, what to do means of grace. Kind of sounds a little bit like the you can't do cat. I don't know. <laughs> um, tons of these here. Uh, part one, easy to see where it starts. It did say it was going to be in pictures. Whoa. 
I could get lost in this. <laughs> I think it's for kids. Um, look at the many layers of this gorgeous picture. Many layers there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even let you look at it super close up. Isn't that amazing? And you could look at that. Um, we used to do, when my son did Blue Nights, it's like kind of like Catholic Boy Scouting. It's the companion program to the Little Flowers. Um, and one of the things we did was when we were reading the lesson, the kids normally had a coloring sheet that went along with it, that while we were reading, they could be coloring. And it was a way to engage them as they looked at the details of the picture. So I kind of almost wish these pictures were on little handouts that you could give to a child as well when you're reading. But this is for an older group. This is not for the kindergarten group or anything. So let's see here. So there's that lovely picture. Let's stop and say um, the page numbers are on the outside corners. Very easy to read. Here it has the name of the book. Over here is the section, the immediate section we're in, Religion and the End of Men. That is lesson one. So it gives you the lesson number is up on the right-hand page. Numbered very clearly that this is lesson one. So under the picture, there is a caption. In creating us, God gave us the power and right to choose which path we should follow, either the path of obedience or the path of disobedience to his commandments. The first seems wearisome and full of thorns, but reward comes in the end. Happiness with God. The second seems full of pleasures and roses, but punishment awaits the traveler at the end, eternal damnation and hell. Each must choose for himself. We may find the choice a hard struggle. We shall be strengthened in the choice of the difficult path if we remember that we belong to God and that he loves us, that he will help us and is waiting for us at the end of the road of obedience. Let's look again at that picture. See the two paths. The one that is marked by thorns goes up and you see all the angels watching. And the one that looks like it's all roses ends in health and fire. And then the lesson goes out. It's organized very neatly. It's again numbered. It starts out with one of like the Baltimore Catechism questions. Guessing. Remember, I never studied that. I do have it and I read it occasionally. It's not the same as really uh, learning those and memorizing them as a child. But it starts out bolded. What is the destiny of man? Man's destiny is to go to God because man comes from God and belongs entirely to God. And then there's number one. Our reason tells us that someone made us. That someone is God. And then it has a scripture quote that tells us. Number two. Oh, it's not just a scripture quote. There's a little bit more, but the scripture quote is included. And it seems that's the way it is. Number two. Our reason also tells us that God must have made us for some purpose. God made man to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and to be happy forever with him in the next. God made us for himself. The end of man, as all creation, is the glory of God, to manifest the divine perfections, to proclaim the goodness, majesty, and power of the Lord. And then it's giving us a number of scripture quotes. These are all laid out this way. It is very reminiscent to me, even with my limited knowledge of the Baltimore Catechism, um, that those are quotes from the Baltimore Catechism. Very interesting. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> when you get to the section here on revelation and science, which is lesson 14. Very interesting. There's a whole page that precedes it that is a list of Catholic scientists. Um, like it even has Galvani, one of the pioneers of electricity, who is also an anatomist and a physiologist. Graham, who invented the Graham Dynamo. Gutenberg invented printing. Herzog invented a cure for infantile paralysis. Holland invented the first practical submarine. There's a whole bunch of these. Aha! Here is Kircher, a priest, made the first definite statement of the germ theory of disease. Lenach invented the stethoscope. Ah, I could just get lost in this. This is great. Picard. This is not Jean-Luc. This Picard was a priest, was the first to measure accurately the degree of a meridian. Then there's a list of other scientists at the end, and it, I love how at the end it's like, and a host of others, too many to mention. And then it starts right out. Do revelation and science contradict each other? No, revelation and science do not and cannot contradict each other, for they are both of God. Number one, there may at times be an apparent conflict. The use of italics here is lovely between faith and science, but this is only apparent and never real. God cannot contradict himself. He cannot lead us into error. And then again, there's a quote there. So it follows this format, the incarnation. I'm sorry. This is just lovely. I'm going to come back to it again. You want to see the incarnation. You're a Franciscan. You know you need to see it. And so here's the lesson on 
the Incarnation. That is Lesson 30, which is the third article of the Apostles' Creed, it tells us. Oh, now I hear myself saying lovely. Thanks, Paula. <laughs> One of our fan friends <laughs> called me out the other day for saying lovely so much. And apparently I can't help it. This book is lovely. Oh, I, I'm sorry, friends. The description's under these. So here's Jesus in with his flock. And there's a larger flock out here. And look at the skies over it. These pictures, who did these? Wow. I'll read you the second half of the caption because I... I'm not giving you the whole book. I wish I could. I wish I had permission to do it. I could teach from this for days here. But it does tell you that pagans are the sheep of Christ and have not yet heard his voice. They all must also be brought into the church. Heretics are sheep that have left the fold of Christ. They must return to the church if they would hear the voice of Christ, the good shepherd, who lovingly calls them to his true church. Oh, must the faithful think and act alike? No. I didn't want to ruin that for you. That's on page 125. That's a section on the laity. So great. Oh my goodness. The entire year divided by the church into periods and seasons. Some of rejoicing, some of penance. Others of wor Okay, you can tell this is worse than the Padre Pio book or the Orthodox Study Bible. I am instantly in love with this book. This is like the Baltimore Catechism for adults and it's written for children. Don't judge me. This is Lovely. Maybe this is just my learning style. It's organized so well. The pictures are so amazing. Um, I love all the references. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Like, I can't even... I can't. There's even a section on St. Augustine here. This is just so, so beautiful. Courtship and engagement is in here. I have no idea... Oh, we're praying when tempted. Mmm. A little shady looking there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why do we not always obtain what we pray for? These are questions that kids have, young adults have, we all have. Oh my goodness, friends. If you could see this, I can't show you everything. I can't. You're just going to have to go out and get this book. It's just completely amazing. It is a little heavy. Um, I don't know if they're going to have a Kindle edition or something that you could look at a, at a laptop because it is a little heavy. Um, the back, there is an appendix on the church year, and it's a description of the feast of the church. Okay, I will admit something that's really weird to me. When it has the Immaculate Conception, it has decem hyphen ber eight. Oh, that's awkward. I don't feel like that was necessary. But this is literally reprinted from the old text. You can tell by the uh, font and all. So they just didn't update that. It was done in the olden times. We'll let that go. I'm guessing it's probably also the old calendar, but a lot of them probably are still here. I don't know what all changed from the old calendar to the new calendar. I really don't know. It does have Whit Sunday or Pentecost Sunday, which is nice because we have, a, you know, my parish is kind of a, a double parish. We also have the ordinary and they call it Whit Sunday. We call it Pentecost Sunday. So it's nice to have that. Um, the most important prayers back on page 404 and any indulgences that are there. What? What? I don't know if indulgences, all these indulgences still exist. That's one thing I don't know. And we'll see if it describes it later. Um, wow. It has the proper name of the prayers too. I do love that. It does also have the grace before meals as well as the grace after meals. Does anyone know the grace after meals? I always knew there had to be one. Well, it didn't always. Like five years ago, I caught on to it. This is, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We give thee thanks for all thy benefits, O Almighty God, who livest and reignest forever, and may the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace, amen. Why are we not saying that? We need to say that. Consecration of the Blessed Virgin, the Memorare, Prayer to St. Joseph, Prayer of the Guardian Angel, the Divine Praises are in here. The Angelus, the Regina Celi, De Profundis, the Mysteries of the Rosary, of course, just the 150, right, the 15 are here. Prayer Before a Crucifix, Anima Christi, Act of Resignation to the Divine Wheel, the Ejaculations, the Prayer to Christ the King, Tantum Ergo, Adoramus and Eternum, the manner in which a lay person is to baptize in case necessity, and then there is a lovely index laid out here that is several pages long. 
Um, like you want to know about sin? What kind of sin? General sin, original sin, temptation, steps to, actual classes of guilt, mortal, <laughs> venial, imperfections, occasions and sources, avoidance of. Okay. So it's very detailed. Very detailed index here. And that is several pages long. I'll just go ahead and give you a little glimpse of a section of the index. Right? So much. This book is lovely. It's hardback. This could be passed down generation to generation. This is, this is nice. I'm liking this a lot. And there is no reason why this couldn't be used by our CIA as well. Just, just saying. I don't actually know what textbooks or books you use for RCA. This is nice, especially if a whole family coming in. Wouldn't this be nice, right? Yeah, this would be nice. Okay, friends, we're 15 minutes in. Ooh. The book is so big, it stands up by itself. I'm just saying. May God bless you, and especially with all the, the great, ah, everything that's in here, man. I, it, hmm, thank you. I have to thank her for these books. Don't forget to thank um, my friend Nina for these books and to say a prayer for her. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.